So hello, welcome to another day of Physics 2. Today we are going to finish chapter 27, which is the last chapter on exam 2. Um, of note, um, yeah, basic setup is we're going to do this chapter today. Friday we'll be practice problems. Monday we'll go through last year's exam. Wednesday will be a, just a random review like last time. Friday will be the exam. Where we left off is I had talked about um, diagrams and just in general doing problems with curved mirrors. And so we're going to pick up today going through and solving with um, solving some problems with curved mirrors before we get into lenses. I admit I'm a little behind where I think I should be. So hopefully I'll get through everything today. We will find out. So. We're going to jump straight into a problem, because as I said, we had just covered the equations. And it says, assume a certain concave spherical mirror has a focal length of 10 centimeters. Locate the image, find the magnification for the object, and if the object distance is 25 centimeters. Determine if it's real or virtual, inverted or upright, larger or smaller. So concave mirrors have positive focal lengths. If it has a focal length of 10 centimeters, that means its focal length is 0.1. The image is at 25 centimeters. That means the, um, just make sure, okay. It, that means the image distance, which we call P, is 0.25 meters. If we want to find the, sorry, the object distance is 25 centimeters. That is a mistake. I'm going to fix this live because that's a big mistake. So the object distance at 25 centimeters. That means P is 0.25 meters. We want to find Q. If we want to find Q, we'll just use this equation. 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. What I'll do is I'll subtract 1 over P from both sides. And then I'll go straight to plugging in. When I plug in, I'll just get that 1 over 0.1 minus 1 over 0.25, which 1 over 0.1 is 10. 1 over 0.25 is full. 10 minus 4 is 6. And that means 1 over q is 6. And if 1 over q is 6, q is 1 6. And so the image distance is 0.167. Now, when I did this, I got a positive number. Because I got a positive number, I know that this is a real image. OK? Then. we can now find the magnification. Magnification is negative Q over P. And so we'll say Q we just got was 0.167. P we know is 0.25 meters, the object distance. I will fix that on these slides. And when I do this math, I get a magnification of negative 0.668. What that means is the magnification is 0.668. This is going to be smaller because it's a less than one number. Also because it's negative, we know it must be inverted. Any questions there for my first one? No, nope, I'm okay. Oh, you're the, oh, no, there are other people there. We are going to very frantically try to, oh, screw you. Send it back. I wanted to really quickly try to fix this everywhere it was wrong, but it's going to be, apparently it's going to, be a lot more of a pain than that, because I messed up everywhere. Yeah, I messed up everywhere. I am not content in messing in, up in one spot. I will mess up in all the spots. OK, let's do another example. This one is saying, what if it's a cut? So the first one was for a concave mirror with a focal length of 10. This one says, what if it is now the object distance is 5 centimeters? It's still a concave mirror. It's still an f of 0.1 meter. But now we're saying the object's at 5 centimeters instead. That just means p is 0 0.05. And the process is still going to be the same. If I want to solve for q, I'm still going to use this equation. I'm still going to subtract 1 over p from both sides. And I'll plug in just like before. 
And just like before, I would say, okay, if one over Q is negative 10, that means Q is negative 1 tenth or negative 0.1 meter. Now of note, I got a negative value of Q this time. That means this is a virtual image and its distance is at 0.1 meters. Meanwhile, if you want to get magnification, magnification is negative Q over P. So it's negative, negative 0.1 over 0.05, which gives you a value of two. This means my magnification is two times and it is not inverted because I have a positive number, which means I have a larger image that is upright. Now that was for a concave mirror for two different image, sorry, two different object distances. Now I'm saying it wrong. If I had instead a convex mirror, and that's all that changed here, is I said a convex mirror distance length 10 centimeters. If it's a convex mirror, you have to make the focal length negative. But other than that, object distance is 0.25. Here's my equation. I subtract one over P from both sides. It's just now I'm going to say that F isn't 0.1, it's negative 0.1. But I can still do this math and get one over Q is negative 14. Therefore, Q is negative one over 14. There is my value. It's a negative number, so this is also virtual. If you want magnification, there is the equation. I'll plug in Q and P, I'll get a value. It's a positive number, so it is upright. And it is less than one, so it is smaller. That's the process. Sorry for the quick mistake I had to fix. I bet you I do it later on in here too, because I copy and paste and I messed up once. Any questions? Okay. Now this was all mules. So what we're going to do basically for the rest of today is we're going to talk about lenses instead which lenses are things that make images out of refracting. That if I hold this lens between you and me and the camera, we can get an image of me kind of upside down and smaller that is just bending the image and directing it. Um, before we get into lenses though, let's just talk about images from refraction in general, especially from a curved surface. Let's say we have a curved surface with some radius r and an index refraction n2. And we have an object that's at some point a distance away from our piece of glass, right? And we're going to say the object is in some area with some other index of refraction n1, where n1 is smaller. So let's, you could say it's l often, but we're going to say it's some, some index of refraction and a glass with a different index of refraction. We'll probably get to say L, like a value of N equals one, and N2 would be like glass, like N is 1.5 or something. What will happen is if the object O is emitting light, which is, that's how you see things, is the light comes off it. The object O will have light that leaves it. And as the light comes off the object, it'll refract on hitting the curved surface. And what's going to happen is all of the light from it will then get to converge at a point i, as long as we're going from lower than higher. And in fact, if you use the same geometry we did for mirrors and mix this with Snell's law, you can get this weird ass equation that if as long as there's a curved surface of radius o, that n1 over p, the object distance, plus n2 over q, the image distance, is the change in index of refractions over the curvature of the radius. And we also can get an equation for the magnification. Now in this case, for this setup, since all of the rays pass through the image, it will be a real image. But this is kind of weird because we said for mirrors that a real image is something that's on the same side, the object and image are on the same side of the mirror. But for the lens, a real image is when it passes through. It's converging to a point. It's converging to a point, so it must be a real image. That's what real really means. It means you can focus it on a screen. Lenses work different from mirrors. I don't think that's that surprising. Mirrors, you look at things on the same side of. Lenses, you look through. 
real images for lenses are one where the image is on the other side of the lens as the object. And the sign convention will be different for lenses and mirrors. And so if this converges down, and I don't actually have a good half sphere of glass. I have one at school and I forgot to bring home. Um, but the sign convention will be different for that for a mirror. See, for a mirror, we had if P is positive in front, negative if back. That's still the same. But we said the image is positive in front and negative if back. For a lens, it's going to be opposite. A lens, lens will be negative when it's in front of the lens and positive when it's in back of the lens. Once again, this is because we're looking through the lens. We don't look and have stuff bounce off like a mirror, but we pass through. And so at it, the image distance for a mirror will be positive when you pass through the lens. The way to think of it is when you use the thing correctly. Mirror is positive when you look at something on the same side because you look bounce light off a mirror. Lens is positive when you look through it because that's what you do with lenses. Other than that, it's basically the same. The rays of curvature, um, well, I guess this is backwards too, is going to be negative when you're behind it because you're passing through. And I mean, what I really mean by the rays of curvature is I mean where the center of the curvature is. In this case, the center is right here. That's behind the lens. So this is a positive number. If it was curved the other way, if it was going so you were looking at a concave surface, it would be then negative. And height and magnification follows the same logic. Basically, oh, that didn't do anything. Basically, positive object a positive image is now on the opposite side of the object because that's where we're looking. And when I say in front of or in back of, I mean from the value of the surface. I mean from where the edge, where the change is from N1 to N2. Now, this does assume a radius of curvature. This also does work for flat things. If something is flat, and in this case, the thing is starting inside the glass, not outside of it, but it still works the same idea. If something has a flat edge, we're just going to say that all is infinite. And if all is infinite, we can say that basically means that n2 minus 1 is 0. With, with a little bit of rearranging, you can get the value. It's of note that if the edge is flat, the, um, that P and Q will always be opposite signs. If Q is positive, P will be negative, always. And therefore, the image formed on a flat refracting surface will always be on the same side, will always be a virtual image every time. That I did this one going through from in the glass to out of the glass, where you can see it's diverging because my image is here due to the diverging. But if I did the other way from the air into the glass, you'd have the same effect. That you end up with a negative Q. Therefore, it's a virtual image. Oh, this is assuming N1. Sorry, this is assuming that way. Yep, sorry. Yeah, this is assuming N1 is less than N2. If N1 is not less than N2, let's go back to this equation. Um, but the same. If n one's not less than n two, it kind of does some weird things instead. This is why, though, if you look at something from above in the waddle, it always looks shallower than it really is, is because if you look at this fish above the waddle, you, the image you see is right here instead of there, and so the thing appears closer because the image distance is what you see. The object distance is how far something is. The image distance is what you see. And since you see the image closer, you think it's closer. OK. I'm going to do a problem. And then we'll actually get into lenses. Let's say, oops. A coin, two centimeters in diameter, is embedded in a solid glass ball of radius 30 centimeters. The index refraction for the ball is 1.5. The coin is 20 centimeters from the surface. 
find the position of the image of the coin and the height of the coin's image. Its original height is two centimeters. So what I can say, and why I don't know why this diagram is squished, is I can say the height is two centimeters. Now the radius of curvature we said is 30 centimeters. But if we look, the center of this is in front of the change in surface. That heel is where we're going to measure from. And the radius goes in that direction. Therefore, the radius is in front of. Therefore, the radius must be a negative value. And so if it's a 30 centimeter radius, there's going to be a negative 0.3 meter radius because it's in front. We have our end values. We're starting in the L. Sorry, we're starting in the glass. We're going to the L. And the value for P is 2 centimeters. Sorry, 20 centimeters. What I'll do is I'll just take my complicated equation and say, OK, if I want to know where Q is, I will subtract N1 over P from both sides. There is a very small mistake on this. Oh, N2 is 1. Yep. I'll then plug in my numbers. N2 is 1, N1 is 1 1.5, and R and P, respectively. Doing that will give me these values, which gives me this. And I can solve Q. I can invert this, and Q would just be negative 0.171. That means Q is 17.1 centimeters in front of the edge. It's negative, so it must be to the left of the surface, which we already kind of knew because the drawing said so. OK. Any questions, though? Less people today. Now, for magnification, well, actually, as for the height of the coin. So for height of the coin, we'll use magnification. And magnification says h prime over h is negative n1q over n2p. If I want to find the height of the image, that's h prime. I'll just multiply both sides by h. And by plugging in my numbers, I can get the height of the coin. It's going to look a little bigger. It's a positive number, so it'll look upright, too. The thing is, these equations that I've been using with all this N1, Q, N2, P, all that crazy shit, this has been assuming a thick piece of glass. Like this lens that I have in my hand, um, if I go and get my camera to focus. Really? Cool. OK. You can see this is like highly magnifying things. So it's not highly, but it's magnifying things. This is a really thick lens. For a thick lens like that, these equations actually kind of work. But what we're going to talk about for the rest of today is a thin lens. Any questions before I get into that? For a thin lens. A thin lens is something with glass and plastic with two refracting surface, one either side. My glasses are a thin lens. What happens when light hits my glasses, when they hit the, when they, when light comes into my glasses, it gets refracted. And when it leaves the glasses, it gets refracted again. And because it gets refracted, refracted again quick in a very thin period, because of a very thin lens, we can talk about exactly how it directs the lights. And thin lenses can just direct lights with very two small refractions, and also with the curvature of the lens. This can be used to direct light. Now, once again, it basically follows all the same derivations of Muir. And I'm going to skip the derivations again, because it's basically the same. And just like Muir's, we will break lenses into two categories, converging lenses and diverging lenses. 
Now, if we go back to these thin plastic I had, like this guy, he was converging heel. And this guy, he was diverging heel, right? To whether the light gets focused to a point or focused away from a point. That's just for a thick piece of glass. But for a thin lens, it's actually much simpler. You see, a converging lens is anything that when parallel light is shined on the lens, it gets focused to one exact point. That if I take my parallel light and move in a converging lens, all the light is focused to a spot. That spot being the focal point. And that all converging lenses will focus light to a set focal point. A converging lens has a positive focal length because it's going to focus something to the light on the other side of a lens and will always make a real image. Well, that's not true. And we'll usually make a real image. We'll get into why that isn't always true in a tiny bit. Now, converging lenses in general is anything that is wider at the middle than at the edges. So this could be biconvex, which both sides are convex. There would be a concave convex, where one side is concave, the other side is convex, or plano convex. One side is flat, one side is convex. Now, of note, if I just say biconvex, in mirrors, a convex mirror is a diverging mirror. But here I'm saying a biconvex lens is a converging lens. They do work differently. But in general, any mirror lens that is wider in the middle than the edges is a converging lens and will focus the light to a set point, the focal length. A diverging lens is anything that's thinner in the middle. And a diverging lens will instead spread light out. That if I remove my converging lens and put in my diverging lens, the light spreads out. And the light spreads out in such a way that if I follow these back, that all the rays are spread out as if they were all coming from one spot. That spot being the focal point. And a diverging lens, which always has a thinner middle, and it could be in any of the forms I show there. Yeah, spread the light from a focal point. Now, these have negative focal lengths and make virtual images, where the focal length is negative because it's on the left side of the lens. Basically, I'm following the same logic, nomenclature-wise, as I did here that because the, before I said if the radius was in front, it's negative. If it's in back, it's positive. I'm just doing the same with focal points. For a diverging lens, the focal point is in front of the lens, so it's a negative value. Now, the nice thing is, is our mirror equations, these, will work for lenses. Because the, le the light in the lens spends a very small amount of time in the lens, you can ignore the index of refraction of the lens. And you can just say that light passes through a lens, it'll follow the exact same equations we did for the mirrors. Well, M is H prime over H or negative Q over P, and one over P plus one over Q equals one over F. We just use the exact same equations and it works. The difference is, for a curved mirror, we found f by saying it's half the radius. For heel, how we find f is going to be a little more complicated. And in fact, how you find the focal point of a lens follows something called the Lensmaker equation. Where the Lensmaker equation says 1 over the focal length is n minus 1, the index of refraction of the lens minus 1, times 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2, where R1 is the radius of curvature on the front of the lens, and R2 is the radius of curvature on the other side of the lens. See, how you do this is you view the lens as fractions of two circles, which can be very complicated. If I want to look at just a bi a biconvex lens, I can say that something that's just has this shape, like a simple convex lens, I say, you know what? This is equal to something with, that's not what I wanted, undo. I can say the front end 
has some radius O that matches the circle. The back end has some radius O that matches the circle. And so this line would be my O1. This line would be my O2. Now of note, you treat if it's positive or negative as if the center of that radius is before or after. See, in this case, all one is positive. All one is positive because the so center of that circle is to the right of the lens. All two is negative because the center of that circle is to the left of the lens. For this guy, for this is a biconcave lens, where just the blue part is the lens, I can again see this race of two circles. All one will be negative because it's before the lens, the center. And R2 will be positive because the center of that guy is after the lens. And this will hold true for any other types of converging and diverging lens, where you can work out the shape by work, figuring out the different circles it has and saying some of the R's are negative, some of the R's are positive. Does that make sense? We have a complete different put. We start. Yeah, I think it makes sense. <laughs> okay. Now we are not going to be making lenses, so the lens maker equation isn't going to show up too heavily here. But it is important to know. I think I have one homework problem on the lens maker equation. But in general, this is what we're going to use for lenses. Oops. Clear my drawings. The same equation for lenses and mirrors for magnification and image distance. But we're just instead of saying focal length is all over two plus or negative, we'll have this equation. Keeping in mind that a, if you're just given a focal length though, just use the focal length and say a positive focal length is a converging lens and negative focal length is a diverging lens. And for signs, we'll say anything, when P is in front of the lens, that's positive, but everything else is positive on the other end of the lens because it's looking through the lens. Magnification is the same idea. Positive magnification, it's upright. Negative magnification, it's downwards. And when we use the lenses, we can set, we can go and work out what images look like. Like this guy right here, if I have a value of um, Q, sorry, if I have a value of P, a value of P that's much bigger than F, if my value of P is bigger than F, what I'll get is that if P is positive, and is bigger than F, then Q will be positive, assuming a converging lens which has F is positive. Anytime you have that, you get an M negative, and it will give an inverted image. When you look through a thin converging lens, it will invert the image if, once again, P is bigger than F. If instead you have a converging lens where P is less than F, if P is less than F on a converging lens, Q will be negative. What Q negative means is that you will have a non-real image. And then you will also have a positive value of M. And therefore, the image will not be inverted. <coughs> and so for a converging lens with a positive P, you might have a positive P, you might have a negative Q. Sorry. Let me say it again. For a positive P, you might have a positive Q. You might have a negative Q. It depends on where it is. However, for a diverging lens where F is negative, if F is negative, Q must be negative. There's no other way to get it because a positive plus something equals a negative. That something has to be negative. And so anytime you have a diverging lens where F is negative, you will always have a positive value, oh sorry, you'll always have a positive value of M, so it will be upright, and you will always have a virtual image. Now, just like mirrors, we don't need to do this mathematically. We could do it with drawing it again. It'll be the same idea. When we did ray diagrams for mirrors, it was two lines, one straight across through F and the other one through C. We're going to do the same two lines, just we're going to define C differently. One's going to go straight across through F, and the other one is going to go through the center of the lens. 
that's what we're going to call C. Wherever they meet, that's where your image is. However, officially lenses have two focal lengths because you can look through a lens either way. You can flip them over and look the other way. Now, if they're biconcave or biconvex, like my drawings here, the focal length will be equidistant on each side. My glasses are a little more complicated. They have different ways of curvature on each side. So that means their focal points aren't the same. If I go back to like this thing, right? That if all one and all two are the same value, then yeah, focal points will be the same to either side. But if all one and all two are different, it makes a difference which one's all one, which one's all two. You're going to get a different value if you really a positive or negative value off the same thing. And so um, of note, if it's a converging lens, the focal point is positive. It goes to the other side of the lens. Now, if it's a diverging lens, the focal length is negative. You go to the same side of the lens. But in general, if you want to do a ray diagram for a lens and you have your object, your object's at distance p, you can say where the image is, draw two lines, one straight across through f and one through the center. Wherever they meet, that's your image, and that's where Q is. As I said before, if your object is less than the focal length, I said you're going to have a virtual image. That's because if your object is less than F, you're going to draw straight across through F, the other one through the center, and you see these lines get further apart. If the lines don't meet, you trace them back to where they would. And what I'll find is they would have met back there. That's my virtual image. That's a negative value of Q because it's to the left. For a diverging lens, you go to F on the same side. So you go across and back through F because F is negative and then through C. Where they meet, that's your image. The thing is, you normally are not going to have a ruler on you and drawing this stuff perfectly. It's better to do it mathematically. So I want to jump into some example problems where I do this mathematically instead of graphically. But any questions to the, there was other people in the class at the beginning. Any class to the person who's left? Uh, I, I guess I'm good. <laughs> okay. We started with more people. All right. Yeah, I think Paul was when I, I Paul was on when I joined. Yeah. So let's do some problems. Let's say you have a converging lens, a focal length 10 centimeters, forming an image of an object stationed at various distances. If the object is placed at 25 centimeters, what's the image, real or virtual, magnification? And probably also is it upright or, um, is it upright or inverted? I didn't ask for that, but I'll do that too. A converging lens has a positive focal length. So it's a converging length, my focal length is 0.1 meter. And my object is at 25 centimeters. Didn't have to fix these. So P is 0.25 meters. If I want to find Q, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. I'll subtract 1 over P from both sides. I'll put in my numbers. I'll do the math. If 1 over, one over P is 6, that means, sorry, if 1 over Q is 6, that means Q is 1 over 6. And there's my value. Now I got a positive value here. I got a positive value, so this is a real image. If I want magnification, magnification is negative Q over P. So I'll just plug in. Now I got that it's a 0.668 magnification. That means it's going to be smaller. And also it's negative. That negative is going to mean it's inverted. So it's going to be pointing down and smaller. All right, makes sense. Yep. And obviously the 0.668 is about, you know, like two thirds the size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it would be nice if it came out to be 0.667, so it was two thirds, but it's not. It's just near it. Unless yeah. I rounded wheeled. I'd have to check, but I don't think I rounded wheeled. I might have. Who knows? It's been a year since I actually wrote the problem, so. Maybe the uh, the 0.167 was supposed to be 0.166 repeating, and that's what gave it the extra. Yeah, that could thing. be. 
Yeah, it probably was. It was probably point one six repeating, so it was by two thirds. Because I I just did the math and it is that is exactly what happened. All right. So for B, let's say instead the object distance was only five centimeters. If the object distance is only five centimeters, it's still a converging lens. My focal length is still positive 0.1. My object is now at five centimeters. I'll just solve the same way. Use the same equation. I'll subtract one over P from both sides. Plug in my values. Get my one over P. Oh, sorry, my one over Q. If I get my one over Q, I can get Q. And there's my image. This really isn't, like traditionally, this is some of the easier stuff we do in this class. These equations are not very complicated. Now it's a negative value of Q, so this is a virtual image. And if I want to get the magnification, same equation, plug in, I get two. That means it's twice as big, it's a positive number, so it's upright. And it's going to be bigger because two is bigger than one. Now let's say instead it was a diverging lens. We're going to go back to an object of 25 centimeters. If it's a diverging lens, you have to say F is negative. So if I say diverging lens, focal length 10 centimeters, say, nah, screw the noise. It's not 10 centimeters. It's negative 10 centimeters. Anytime it's diverging. But past that, P is 0.25. We pull out the same equation. We'll subtract 1 over P from both sides. Plug in our numbers. Do some math. We can get Q. Once again, for a diverging lens, Q will always be negative. So Q will always be virtual. And magnification. Oops. Ooh. This is once again me copy and pasting. I do not know how I just did that, but let's try that again. This is what happens when I copy and paste blindly. But magnification, just negative Q over P. And I can plug in my values and get a value. Now it's a positive value, so it's not inverted. And it's less than 1, so it's smaller. Now, all right. This is all assuming a very simple setup. We're looking through a lens. Most optical devices, and we're going to cover optical devices a bit next chapter, which is after the exam, but whatever. It's only so much I can fit in the chapter. Most optical devices, like telescopes and microscopes, usually have more than one lens. If you have multiple lenses, just do them one at a time. If you have multiple lenses, figure out the where the image is from the first lens. Wherever the image is from your first lens, make that the object for your second lens. That's how you do multiple lenses. Um, and I mean, I'm going to do an example. This can get ugly, but it's not complicated. And once again, this is how a telescope works or a microscope, which we will cover in chapter 28. Is that right? Yeah. This is chapter 27. Yeah, it is. OK. For example, let's say we look at an object through two lenses, one with a focal length of 10 centimeters, one with a focal length of 20 centimeters, where we're 30 centimeters to the first lens plus another 20 to the second lens. Now, these are both converging lenses. I know that because A, I wrote F1 is positive, but also it's thicker in the middle than it is on the edges. So if these are converging lenses, I know F1 and F2. How we do this is we'll start by just ignoring F2. And we'll say, hey, look, we have an object 30 centimeters from a lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters. And so we'll just plug into this equation. We'll subtract 1 over P1 from both sides. And yes, I'm using 1, 1, 1 here just to keep track of it. I'll plug in my numbers. I'll do my math. Once I get 1 over Q, I can get Q. 
And I would say, if I just had the one lens, if basically I had that, that would be my value of Q. And my magnification would be negative 0.5. Now, what I recommend doing on these, I'm going to tell you right now, what I recommend doing, if you, because I'm pretty sure there's one of these on the homework, is after you find the first one, kind of just draw it on the figure. Say, what happens is I have a positive value of Q. A positive value of Q means it's on the right of the lens. And so somewhere about here, I have my image. I have an upside down image, because M is negative, and that the image is going to be, be is going to be between the lenses. I know it's between the lenses because I know it's 15 centimeters to the right of lens one. It's to the right because it's positive. And if there's 20 centimeters between the lenses and we're 15 centimeters to the right, it's in the middle. Thing is that 15 centimeters isn't what I want. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, let's pretend that this right heel is our object. And I'll say that object is five centimeters away from lens two, just 20 minus 15. And I'll say that object has a value of P for lens two of five centimeters, of 0 0.05, because it's five centimeters away. And that's what I'm gonna do. What if I have two lenses? I'm gonna do, use the first lens, find the uh, image. Once I find the image, say, nope, that's my object now, and start over. Finding a new value of P, almost always you got to subtract to find the new value of P. But once I have my new value of P, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. So 1 over Q equals 1 over F minus 1 over P. I can plug in some values, get an equation. Now that's 1 over Q, so this gives me Q. And what that Q tells me is it's 0 0.067 meters to the left of F2. It's to the left of F2 because it's negative. Also, I can do the magnification. The magnification is negative Q2 over P2. And that'll give me that the magnification is positive 1.33. And so what I'll say is if I want to find where this image is, the first lens made it upside down, had a negative M. The second lens had a positive M. But that means it doesn't get flipped. So it's still going to be upside down. It's made upside down by the first one. It's not changed by the second. And this guy says that the image is 0 0.067 meters to the left of the lens. That's 6.7 meters to the left. So I'll say it's going to be somewhere around here. And that's where my final image is. That my image, which is called I2 on this overly messy diagram, says it's to the left of I1, because it was before five centimeters over, now we're six centimeters over. And that is where the image will be. Now, if I ask you to find the image relative to the original object, then you're going to have to do some subtracting to find where. If I ask you to tell me where the image is relative to lens one, you're going to have to do some subtracting to find out where that is. But you can say that's where it is, point, sorry, point zero six seven meters to the left of lens 2, and get the idea. Now, total magnification, the total magnification will be the sum of the magnification. See, lens 1 makes it half as big and flips it. Lens 2 makes it um, four thirds as big and keeps it at the same. And so if you want to find the total magnification, you'll just multiply the two magnifications. Negative 0.5 times 1.33. Negative 0.5 times 1.33 is negative 0.667. And so this image will be inverted, because it's negative, and will be 2 thirds as big, because that's what I got. A half of 4 thirds is 2 thirds. And so if you have two lenses, just do the problem twice. OK? All right. So 
that is the end of the material on your first exam. I have been working writing your guys' exam. I'm not done with it yet. I have two and a half problems written. Um, general idea, though, is the exam will be one problem from each chapter. The first problem will be about induced EMF in some way, shape, or form. That might just be induced EMF. Well, induced EMF is negative N, change in flux over change in time, and flux is BA cosine theta. It might also be inductors, be it just, yeah, anything with inductors. Your second problem will be AC circuits. So know what I get from max to RMS. No impedance. Impedance will almost definitely show up there. No phase angle. Know how to get resonant frequency. And transformers is the other thing here. And power I skipped over. It'll be some sort of AC circuit. I mean, impedance is going to show up somehow. The next problem will just be about reflection and refraction. So it will be Snell's law the law of reflection, and maybe critical angle, maybe something solving for n, maybe the speed of light in a material. And the last problem will be lenses and or mirrors. I am not on the exam going to ask you to use the lens maker's equation. It's a little complicated to do quickly. So it's just going to be this 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 over f magnification and how to get the focal length for a mirror. Um, I do expect you to know a converging is positive, a diverging is negative for focal lengths and radiuses. So focal lengths is for lens and mirrors, though I didn't write that here. And know how to recognize virtual, magnified, reduced, upright, inverted, and all that jazz. But it's basically just these equations. That's what's going to be on there. Uh, so I'll do example problems on this on Friday. But other than that, there you go. I'll stop there. All right. You have a good day. You too. Thank Bye. you.